What's up, clubbers? Welcome to Web3 Club. I'm sorry if my voice is not <laughs> good enough today because I'm suffering from COVID and it's taking a toll on my throat. But anyway, coming back to the video. But anyway, coming back to today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how do we sign a specific voucher on the back end so that you can then very securely give this in an automated way to a user who can mint something from your website via a whitelist without you needing to pay for gas for that whitelist. I've already covered the topic uh, in my previous couple of videos. You can check them out. In my first video, I explained how do we sign messages and how does signing work. In the second video, I explained how do you create a gasless whitelist for your NFT or any other token or any sort of project. In that video, I was just explaining how the whole thing will work and I sort of did it with like manual effort, a one-time signatures giving it one by one to the user if you would have done it that way in this video what i'll do is i'll explain how do we do it on the back end how do we create a voucher and signature on the back end which you can then send it via your server only to the authenticated user but before we get started please make sure to hit the like on this video subscribe to this channel i really like reading your comments uh, if you have any questions just put it there i try to respond to most of them if you have bigger questions something that you don't understand a little help that you need with debugging come to my discord server there are a bunch of people who help you out and i also try to respond there all right with that said let's get started now the last time the flow that we discussed was an overall flow where we were defining a signing domain and getting into the nitty gritties of it. Uh, today we are going to discuss a little more abstracted part of abstracted version of it where you will whitelist an address by saving in the database. So for example, if you are trying to give a whitelist to me, so what you will do is you will ask my address and then basically put it in, in a database somewhere so that you can retrieve it later. Then when I come to your website, uh, you will try to authenticate me. First, you will connect my my wallet. Once the wallet is connected, you will ask me to sign a message, which you will then recover on your server to figure out who is the public key or wallet address, which has signed this message. If the address with which I connected and the address that you received by recovering the signed message uh, using EC recover for Web3.js or verify message for ethers on the backend, uh, if they are the same address, then basically I am who I claim to be. In that case, you authenticate me and then the authenticated user, if the user is in the whitelist in the database, if I am in the whitelist in the database, you will sign the voucher for me, uh, as discussed in my previous video, uh, you will sign the voucher for me and then you will sort of return it in, a, in an API call or something like that so that the client side code can use that voucher and give it to the smart contract, which will then again do the verification and then make sure that I'm allowed to mint or whatever and then move forward. So I've discussed most of the other things uh, in my previous video. The only thing that I've not discussed is how do you sign messages in the backend? Now, if you're looking for how do you do the API integration and everything, this is not the correct video because I'm not going to discuss that today. I might do that in the future. If you want to see a video where I do that end to end, please leave a comment or Come on Discord, let, let me know. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but coming back in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take my code that I had written uh, on the front end and then I will simply use that in the back end with a little modification and then you'll see how easy it is to go, go about with that. Now, this was a JavaScript code that I had shown you in my previous video. If you've not seen my previous video, please make sure you go and check that out. Otherwise, this will not make sense. I've linked the video somewhere. I'll also put the link to that video in the description because it's going to be very useful. But yeah, if this is the relevant code in my previous video where, you know, there is a domain and everything. And I also explain how the domain and typed signing work in my previous video. So make sure you understand that we are going to abstract that part out. Basically, I'm going to use the sign helper and I'm going to copy that to a new new file called backend.mjs. Why mjs? So that I can use async await in my backend node calls. So I've copied the code from my previous video and you can see over here, this is the same code. Uh, there's only one difference. I've commented this part out. What this part was doing was it was connecting me to the MetaMask 
and then getting my address from the metamask and then moving forward with it but i don't need to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read delete this part now just to show you uh, just to show it as an example what i'm doing is i'm creating a random wallet and how do you create a random wallet you can do it any number of time a wallet is nothing but a combination of private and a public key you create a private key and from that uh, you can generate a public key so create random basically generates a private key and a corresponding public key it also creates a mnemonic in everything which is like a seed phrase for you uh, in metamask and other wallets but i'm doing this randomly what you will do is you will create it once randomly and then use the private key and generate the wallet using that private key now how do we do that uh, what basically you need to do is first make sure that in the package.json in the node modules you have ethers installed then you open node you write var ethers is equal to require ethers all right with ethers dot wallet dot create random you create a random wallet as you can see over here there's an address and there's a mnemonic and there's a signing key and is sign and everything uh, with this wallet what you can do is find the private key so this is the private key now you can copy this private key and just store it somewhere now that i have stored the wallet key i have basically stored the private key i copied it uh, now if you want to recreate this wallet you can just have w2 is equal to new ethers dot wallet and then you enter the private key here and you can see the address of these two is exactly the same so i'm going to use this private key and i'm going to uh, use this as the signer so now what you basically will do is in your contract dot sol you will make sure that the public key corresponding to this wallet is an accepted address which is allowed to sign and then move forward from there great so now i have a signer and i have sign helper and voucher and then everything all right so now what i can do is i can simply require this backend.mjs sign helper is equal to require backend.mjs and i think i need a dot slash here now i got an error requiring uh backend.mjs so what i'll do is i'll import this is some trickery which is not something that you will need to do just bear with me for a moment all right so what i've done is written var sign helper and then importing the file uh, it gives us a promise uh, which i resolved by assigning sign helper the imported module so i press enter and it should work hopefully yeah it did work now uh, i will just go sign helper dot default which gives us the static methods and then in the default what i'm going to do is call get sign and here i can i can send the contract address the chain id the token id and name and it will return uh, the signed voucher so let us assume that uh, my own address was the contract address it can't be but let us just assume the next thing that i want is the chain id let it be one token id let it be 12 <laughs> and name let it be web3 club and i have var sign is equal to the value sign was a promise which sort of resolved and it gave us a signature right so this is how you generate the signature on the back end so you can you can see that there was no front end code involved everything was done on the back end this private key you will have to secure because whoever gets it can sign anything on your behalf so this is something that you need to make sure is not let's say checked into git or anywhere all right so let's just try it out in action uh, what i will do is i have the same smart contract from my previous video so i'm going to open remix so in remix i have basically pasted the same solidity code that was here in nft.nft.sol which is the same code that i used in my previous video so i'm going to go ahead and compile it all right once compiled you go here and then you deploy the mytoken.sol click on deploy amazing uh, now the next thing that we will do is we will first take we will take this wallet all right uh, we will take this wallet and then we will get the address from this wallet whatever the address is we will transfer the transfer the ownership to this specific address so i click on transact 
Now, why did I do that? Because I'm signing with this address. So uh, we are basically checking who is the owner and the owner has basically signed the, signed this smart, uh, this signature, this voucher. So uh, that's why we are transferring the ownership uh, to my, uh, to this address through which we are signing. So that once decrypted, uh, the value of this, the signer and owner is same and we will be able to move forward. All right, and then we go and check this sign. The signature that we have, I've copied. Let's just check first. Uh, let's not move forward. Let's just check the signature is there. The ID was 12 and the name is Web3Club. I call and the address that I'm receiving is not the same. And the reason is because I was signing for a contract which was my address, but actually it's the wrong thing to sign for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come go back here and change the contract address. Now, if I find the sign, I can see the signature has sort of changed. So I remove from here and paste it here and call it. And now the address that I'm getting is BA9EC, BA9EC ending with 6C360, 6C360. It's the same address. Amazing. So now what will happen is if I try to redeem this signature, it will let me move forward and I can try it out. I can try to mint. So I can try to mint with the signature, the ID 12 and the name Web3 Club. So I copy my own address over here. I click on before clicking on transact. I just open this window a lot. I click on transact and you can see a green tick which means it worked amazing amazing so this is how it was working now in this now in this uh, specific piece of code what I'm not doing is not storing this ID so that it is not used again but this is something that you should do uh, so that somebody cannot use the same signature again and again as you can see I am able to do that <laughs> all right uh, if you want to know how to do that, how to not let somebody use the same signature again and again, I basically explained that in my previous video, just go and watch it. Uh, again, it's linked in the description area <laughs> with all my other relevant things. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please make sure to hit that like button, uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, please let me know in the comments what, what other things you want to understand, what you think. I should make videos around let jump in my discord chat with me have fun <laughs> i do gm every day over there <laughs> all right thank you so much i hope to see you again next week and i hope i recover so that my voice is not as bad as it is in this video <laughs> thank you so much bye bye